Uh, my name is Rob Crombie. Um, I'm an oil painter. And uh, the um, reason I'm here tonight is to talk about my beginnings and uh, travels to the south of France for subject matter and uh, talk about a couple of the paintings that I brought along. Um, I don't know, I think I wanna start by saying, uh, you know, I, I, as I began painting, um, I found myself really leaning toward landscapes and uh, in particular trees. And um, I think that goes way back. Um, when I was a kid, it was kind of um, crazy at our house. And uh, I used to go down in a ravine behind our house. And uh, that was where I spent my days, you know, playing with my friends and climbing trees, building dams and, you know, blowing up frogs. <laughs> but, um, you know, I found a lot of peace out in the woods and, uh, it, it really, um, it felt like home to me. You know, it's, it's where I felt most comfortable and uh, things were a little too unpredictable otherwise. But um, what I wanted to do was um, talk a little bit about the beginning and uh, take you to France and um, then discuss these. So, uh, I went to art school after high school. I went to Cooper School of Art, and um, it was there that uh, I took an interest in painting. I didn't really think that my, my work was all that good, but my teacher loved it. And um, so uh, he put one of my paintings in the front, in the window in the front of the school on Euclid Avenue for a summer back in 19, I think it was 71. And, you know, I was really flattered and, um, you know, I found something that really calmed me down. It, it really got my full attention. Um, I'm ADD as can be. And uh, so it's very hard for me to concentrate. But when I painted, it just, it was so soothing to me. And I felt locked in, you know, I wasn't distracted by other things. And uh, so I painted at school for a couple of years. And then I... Um, I just bagged it. Um, I walked away from it and uh, I was maybe 20 years old at that time, 21, and um, I just walked away and I went down a path <laughs> off to the left and it wasn't a good one for about 15 years. And um, when I came back, I uh, um, started getting serious with life again. You know, I really, uh, really enjoyed um, building furniture at that time. And, you know, that was my creative outlet. Uh, later on, 30 years after art school, after the insistence of a friend of mine to go back to painting, I did. Um, I went to the Chicago, uh, the Art Institute of Chicago back in 2002 and um, a friend of mine lived up in Chicago and he told me to come up and I said, why? And he said, I'll show you when you get here. So we go downtown, we go to the Art Institute and it's a show of Van Gogh's work. There was 37 pieces and um, uh, along with some work by Gauguin and uh, the focus of the show was Studio of the South. It's when Vincent was uh, working with Gauguin in the Yellow House. And uh, so, my buddy Don and I go into the museum, we get in line and we go in and about four paintings into the show, I come across this one. It's a cypress, uh, two women with a cypress. And I'm standing literally three feet, four feet away from the painting and something happened. I mean, it changed me. I mean, I, I felt this, um, desperation, I felt this darkness, I felt this passion. I, I, it, it, there were just so many things going on inside of me when I'm looking at this painting, I was looking deep into those, the swirls of the, the uh, paint and the way he laid it on there. And it just moved me so much. And I'm wiping tears as I walk away from this painting and about four paintings later, same damn thing <laughs> happens to me. 
and then again about four or five paintings later. And I'm standing there wiping my tears and this woman next to me said, they're really moving, aren't they? And I said, man, I, I can't explain this. It's pretty weird to be crying at a painting, but you know, this just changed my whole life. You know, it was back in uh, 2002. I've been painting for almost 19 years now. And um, it's just been a dream come true for me because it, it really, like, like I said, back in art school, it really calms me down and it gets my total focus when I'm working on these pieces. So back in 2005, I made my first trip over to France and uh, went down to Provence and um, did some research ahead of time and found a beautiful bed and breakfast um, to stay at. And so this is a slideshow of, of my travels over there. My first stop after I get off the, I fly into Paris, take the train down south, it's uh, 465 miles and you make it in three hours on the trains. It's so fast, it's wonderful. But my very first stop is at uh, the art store. And this place is just packed. I mean, it's a huge place. It's bigger than this room. And uh, canvases of all size, sizes and um, uh, so on. So I get all my materials. I buy another easel while I'm there. And I, I have all my materials. And I go back to my room, put my things in my room, and get ready for the next day. For eight years in a row, I stayed at the Ma Shamrock. Um, it was a wonderful bed and breakfast. It used to be a farmhouse and where the double doors are in the front right corner, that was where they kept the horses. And it's now the kitchen. <laughs> and uh, there are seven bedrooms upstairs and the owners live up on the third floor. And uh, it was just a beautiful place to uh, stay in. I did a drawing of it while I was there. That's John. He's the, uh, the owner, his wife, um, I didn't have a picture of, but every morning he'd bring out breakfast to everybody and it was bread and croissants and raspberry preserves and fresh juice and coffee. And it was absolutely incredible. It was a wonderful way to start the day. And there's what it looks like afterwards. <laughs> That's where I sat every morning out in front of the house. And, uh, I wound up uh, doing a painting of that later on. This is the kitchen, typical farmhouse kitchen, and the stairs leading up to the rooms. That's the part of the living room. That's the room I stayed in many times. Um, after eight years, uh, the owner's wife passed away, and uh, so he shut the bed and breakfast down, and. Um, I found another place uh, called Villa Glanum, which is right across the street from the uh, hospital that uh, Van Gogh stayed in the last year of his life. Uh, this is the uh, courtyard and part of the hotel. That's my room, fairly yellow. Great food there too, it was wonderful. Every day when I would paint, I'd come back and I would just lean my canvases against the shrubs or on top of the shrubs to get fresh air so that they would hopefully dry quickly uh, so I could pack them in my suitcase and bring them home. Um, here's the dining room again. There's another one out through that door. And then the next day, what I do is I head over to the asylum where Van Gogh stayed. Um, this is the main gate. And once the gate is open, you walk down this main corridor into the hospital itself. They have a statue of him uh, on the way, which is really beautiful. It's uh, bronze. Courtyard in the middle of the hospital, a room like he had, same bed, bars on the windows. It was uh, pretty tight security around there. Beautiful old, this place was built in the 1600s and uh, still, still going today. 
out here, there were gardens. There's off to the right there, that's lavender that's been cut down. Those are irises in the middle and uh, some apple trees. And again, I did a painting of it or from it. And uh, going into town into San Rami, that's the town I stayed in and um, wonderful restaurants, really colorful, great food. Just a beautiful little village, great desserts. <laughs> the bakeries there are incredible. This is in Arles. I'm on top of the Colise Roman Colosseum looking down over the one portion of the town. And each town, each little village in Provence has a market day. Uh, market day in San Rami was on Wednesdays and it was just absolutely fabulous. All the streets were shut down and everybody put up their wares and uh, you found everything from cheese to fruit to cloth to clothes and uh, even artwork um, was on display. But it was just a, a busy, bustling day in the village. And, and then it would be in another town, and I'd go there the next day. And you know, it was just a lot of fun to be around all that festivity. They'd have music playing and really a lot of fun. And then. Getting around is very nice. It's, they've, they've got it all figured out. The, the, um, the, uh, the streets going from village to village, um, there are roundabouts everywhere. And the way you know how to get to the village you wanna to go to is just by that. They don't go by street names quite as much. I mean, yes, D, D194, would be the route that it is. But if you wanna to go to Bonneu, that's the way you go. Turn right where that sign is, off the roundabout. And uh, Fontaine, Lacoste, Lumeron, and Roussillon. Um, the, the villages are so beautiful. This is in Roussillon. All the, all the uh, buildings in the village are painted different colors and combinations and it's just gorgeous. Very cool architecture. It's like one room deep and four stories tall. That's in Le, uh, Le Beau. But I love these colors, you know, the, the, the colors of the wall and then putting green with it. It's just, I love their sense of color and design. This is in Minerbe, an aerial view. You can't, you can't go over there and just hop on the train and come home, you know? It's, it's so, it, that, that, that old stone, it just gets in your bones, you know? And you take a piece of that home with you, you know? It's, it's like, uh, you know, memories forever and you can't wait to go back. At least I, I, I been, I've been over there 11 times now and uh, I like it because I can hit the ground running. Um, I know exactly where to go for the food I want, and I know where the laundromat is, and, and so on. Il sur le Sorgue, this is it's such a cool town. The, the river that runs through here, um, this is where the very first paper mill in Europe uh, was built. It was just up the river uh, from this photo. But this water coming through town the river is about eight or nine feet deep and the water is so crystal clear. You can see every little stone on the bottom. It's just gorgeous. There's the other end of town. This is uh, San Rami again, downtown cafe. Another rooftop. This is Lacoste. Gourd. I love those cypress trees. They're so beautiful. And when it's a windy day, boy, they just, they dance in the wind. They're gorgeous. The 
the valleys just, they're incredible. They've got, the valleys are full of vineyards and olive groves and up on the more level ground uh, is where they grow the wheat. And it's a very agricultural uh, area. Downtown San Remy, they line the streets with these platon trees and uh, they're just gorgeous. And every fall they cut them back and they just look like big antlers all around town. It's kind of crazy looking, but that's how they control the growth of the trunks and the branches and so on. Uh, Cause they don't want them obviously poking into the buildings. Another view. I just love the countryside. It's so beautiful down there. There's an olive tree in the wind. I mean, look what that, the wind, the mistral winds, man, when they come in, it's just incredible. They're so strong. Stop to draw on the roadside. And that was on a piece of corrugated cardboard, but I wanted to do it. <laughs> it just seemed like something fun to do while I was over there. And then um, some, of these, some of these slides that you're gonna see are, are um, paintings that I did while I was there. And some uh, are obviously from photos that I did when I got uh, worked from when I got back. I loved painting over there. It was just so much fun to uh, be outdoors in that air. And um, I mean, I, I can't think of a better vacation. I really can't. To be able to go to the south of France and buy an easel and bags of paints and to paint the day away with a baguette and, and a bag of cheese and huge bottle of ice cold water. I mean, I, I, was, I was in heaven. I loved it. Now, some of these I worked on when I got home, but uh, it's just so much fun. This paint, you know, painting just suits me so much because I'm, I'm just, I, I, I never feel the same two days in a row. And uh, I know somebody that can attest to that. <laughs> but, but I, you know, it, it's just every time I do a painting, um, I think I approach it differently. I use the colors differently. I lay them on differently. I might use a palette knife one time and the next time use a brush. I might use a combination of both. I might go with intense color. I mean, you can obviously see that there's a change in tone from <laughs> this to this, but I like to, you know, pick it up, you know, and, and make it fun and make it something where I want to be there. And uh, this was a real simple shot that I took and I, I just loved it. I just thought, you know, I could sit there in the morning with my coffee and my laptop and uh, put my feet up on the table and enjoy it. So I did a painting from it and a few years back, but uh, I rarely do, I, I, I don't paint to copy things. I really don't. I, I will change the composition. I'll change the, you know, maybe a, something about a house or a, a tr number of trees, but you know, I, I'm inspired possibly by a photo and then I paint probably the, the building out front first, but it just seemed wrong to me visually in my mind. So putting the barn behind it, it kind of pulled the painting together for me. Without that barn back there, it seemed like two paintings. It seemed like the right-hand side was one painting and the left-hand side was another without that building tying them in. This is in Lower Moron. And I love skewing the perspective, playing with the, the buildings, giving them a lean, making them feel alive and, and uh, very old. 
as well. This was a fun piece to do. Um, I put the woman in with the umbrella, jumped up the red a little bit, but man, doing all those cobblestones, <laughs> it took some time. This is a piece I did probably 15 years ago. This is back in Gord. A little paint, this is a smaller painting I just did. And the olives again, this is uh, near Le Beau. And the painting I did from it. This is out by the pool at the bed and breakfast. And it just inspired me to do this. So obviously the photos are for inspiration, but I don't, I don't copy. I, I think that's kind of, for me, it's kind of boring. Again, taking away the tree, obscuring the building, I thought it looked a little better to kind of open it up and make it feel a little more inviting. This is a beautiful meadow uh, outside of town. And I just did this piece about a month or two ago. This is my favorite meadow in all of France. It's in a little town called a galley and uh, it's nothing. It's, it's a, it's a town with one hill, a pretty steep hill with little shops and homes lining that hill. You get up to the top of the hill and most people would just look off to the right. It's a hill going up to the ruins of an old church, but I'm a wall jumper <laughs> and I, I went over the wall and I walked into this meadow with all this dormant grass. And um, this was about, well, it was my first trip there. And when I got back, I had to paint what I felt from this meadow and, and that view in particular. But this meadow has to be about two acres. And it's actually a huge rock that just rose out of the earth. And uh, over the years, of course, it became covered with dirt and now it's got a bunch of grass on it, but uh, it's just gorgeous. And if you go up to the high end of the meadow, there's a, about a hundred foot drop down to um, olive groves down below. And the view is just incredible. Um, but this one, this is in my living room and I've had this for 18 years in my, well, 16 years in my home. Um, I can't tell you why, but I'm never going to sell this. I just love it. It, it speaks to me. It, it kind of talks to me. Um, uh, my early days doing abstract painting. Um, it's very loose and it's uh, a great memory of my very early trips to uh, the south of France. I love handling olive trees in all kinds of different ways and different colors. This is a viridian green, and when you add white to it, it just turns into this silvery greenish blue that's, to me, it's just gorgeous. It really stands out from the other greens. This is in Lormoran again. Off to the right is a big soccer field. Off to the left is a big castle. And that's the piece I did from it. This is the olive grove that Vincent uh, painted in. Um, this is second generation of olive trees. The ones that he painted would have been pretty big by now, but I think something came through and wiped them out. And these are the uh, grandchildren, so, so to speak, uh, of the trees he painted. But this is the, the plot that he wandered around in to paint. I think he did about six different um, maybe seven different paintings from these trees uh, with the mountains in the background. It's just so much fun playing with oil paint. <laughs> it's like, um, you know, when you're working up close to it and you see what happens when you 
move your brush across some wet paint and, and uh, you know, mixing, you know, I, I do a lot of mixing of my colors right on the canvas rather than on the palette. Because um, I'm layering so much, it, it really helps me to mix it there rather than on the, you know, I, I, I love the um, color next to color rather than blending a color. I like color to speak for itself and come through that way. You know, hiding little things like pinks in the background and, um, you know, you can't really tell, but boy, there's so much texture on that canvas. There's so much paint on there. And, you know, I didn't start off that way. My very first canvases were um, very smooth, very, very thin paint. And, uh, um, but I used the big brush. I wanted to be loose. I wanted to be uh, much more emotional and passionate. These olive trees are just gorgeous to me. <laughs> Look at that. That was there when Vincent was there. And that's his, his uh, olive grove at the hospital. They just grow so, you know, there's, there's no two alike. They're just so weird. <laughs> They're so gnarly and twisted and, and beautiful. Look at all the different colors that are in those leaves and the, from the sunlight. It's just incredible. There's that big twisted tree. I was able to sit there and work on it. This was planted in 900 AD at the Roman aqueduct. And uh, that tree, the base of that tree is about six feet across. And there's another one. Look at that, I mean, that just, that looks like something from a Spielberg movie, you know? It's gorgeous. Looks like rock. Just incredible. So here, once again, like with this, this painting, I like to start with a, a dark undercolor in the trees, usually like maybe a dark sap green, a very dark green. And then I come back in with my palette knife or my brush, adding lighter tones over the top. And that's what gives me the texture and the separation of colors to achieve the look I want. I like to use the cooler colors down below for shadows and break things up toward the top, reaching for the sky. That's an obelisk in the background. That's, that, that's how far down they dug to remove rock from that area, but they left that showing how high it was originally it's a quarry, or was a quarry, and now it's an olive grove. There are the olives. My toys. Oops. Yeah, painting plein air over there is just, I do that for about the, I, I go over for about two weeks, and for the first week I go over air or somewhere else and paint every day. And I usually wind up with about three or four canvases that are ready to bring home. Um, and I use some paints that I can buy over there that do, they are oil paints, but they dry a little bit quicker. And with, if you work them every day, you're kind of turning them over and exposing them and they dry a little quicker when you work on them every day. But it's so wonderful to set up camp and work on a painting, and then when the sun gets low, I just pack everything up, head across the street, back to my room, prop my canvas up, um, put everything else in a bag and leave it in my room. 
there was one, one time back in 2015, I went over there and I was working on my, my painting with that same easel. And uh, when I got back to my room, I leaned the, the easel against the uh, hedges and I removed that bar on the top. I lifted it up because I was gonna put the painting down. And I forgot that I had done that. And I grabbed my easel, I grabbed something else. I go back into my room and I plop the easel down like this right next to the bed. And the painting goes, bam, right on the bedspread, soaking wet. I had to buy the hotel a new bedspread, but um, things happen, you know. The last week I'm there in the evening, I love going across the street and sitting around the olives and uh, doing pen and ink drawings. It's just a great way to spend a couple hours and I've got headphones on listening to my favorite music and uh, nobody's around, all the tourists are gone, the buses are gone and so on and it's just very peaceful. But I love to uh, just sketch these twisted little trees. That's looking back across the street at the hotel. The Olive Grove. Aren't they cool trees? <laughs> I love them. You know, they're just, they're so gnarly and so much emotion in them. That was done using a, uh, a new tool that I found over there. It's, 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 a, it's a pen, but the tip of it is a brush, a very pointed brush. And the more you press on it, the thicker the line. So it was just a matter of doing a lot of dashing and so on to make this drawing. It was really a lot of fun to do. And the drawing is really only about that big. It's very small. This one's in my den at home, close up. It's crazy when you look at these so close. There's just so much going on in there, but you know, when you stand back, you see an image and you see shadows, highlights, and some detail. But when you get in on them, it's crazy to think that that actually makes a picture. Again, this is using a palette knife and loading paint on the knife and moving it where I want. Complementary colors are fantastic to me. I mean, it, you know, you, you really want that in a painting. Um, the red, the green, the uh, yellow and purple, blue and uh, orange. They just, you know, if you, uh, oh, I can't think of the artist's name. He said, you know, if, if you want your, your lemon to be yellower, put it next to blue and uh, it's true, you know, these complementary colors really do enhance any piece I'm working on. Then getting back up to Paris um, was always the end of my trip. The last day of my trip, I'd get on a train down in Avignon at uh, 6 a.m. And then uh, I'd be up in Paris about 9.30 and uh, then get a ride to my uh, hotel a taxi to my hotel. Then I would take another taxi back down into the city um, and explore Paris on foot for about six or eight hours. And uh, this became a painting uh, about a year ago, I think, year and a half ago. And um, a closer view of it. That tower is so damn big. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. You know. Very, when I saw it the first time, 
it was over the top of some buildings as I rounded a corner going down a narrow uh, street. And it was like, oh my God, I'm in Paris. You know, I, I, it, I think that's when it really hit me that, you know, when I saw the Eiffel Tower. And then, so I, I go to the tower and I'm telling you, man, it, it's huge underneath there. It's, it's enormous. And um, the pylons that hold those legs are, you know, bigger than this room. It's, it's incredible. It's uh, one hell of a massive structure. Really enjoy it. This is my studio in Chagrin. And uh, it's where I like to get a lot of paintings started. It looks a lot neater in this picture than it really is. But um, yeah, I work with seven other artists, six other artists there now. And uh, um, we all come in at different times right now because of COVID. But uh, we have our masks on and we all paint safely. And we, you know, we critique each other. We help each other. Um, uh, the best we can, but uh, usually I'm in there on Tuesdays and Thursdays. In the used to be in the evening, but sometimes during the day now. My studio at home: palette, brushes, knives, paint, tons of paint. Just a canvas this size will sometimes go through three of those tubes of paint three or four, and they're big, they're big tubes, 200 milliliter. The red pitcher are all my brushes from France that I brought home. And uh, I don't know what I'm saving them for, <laughs> but that's where they sit. And uh, this is a shot out the window of the train heading back up to Paris. And, you know, it's, uh, it's always a hard trip for me to make coming back. It just is. It's, uh, I, you know, I, I just love it there so much, but I'll be honest, you know, staying in a hotel, eating three meals a day in restaurants and not knowing much of the language, um, after a couple of weeks, I'm ready to come home. Uh, but it's just, the beauty of that area is just incredible. While I'm up there, I take a taxi up to a little city called auvers soise and that's where Vincent stayed the last 30, uh, 37 days of his life. This was his room. This is where he died uh, after a gunshot wound. Um, it was on the second floor of a small building. The first floor uh, was, um, or is still a cafe and uh, he stumbled back up the stairs, got into his room and laid in bed and the people downstairs that ran the restaurant called for a, a doctor and got in touch with his brother who was in Paris and Theo came up and uh, spent a little time with him before he passed away. But this, this was just bone chilling to me that when I first saw this, to be able to be in the room where he really, you know, he really was there, you know, it wasn't just a town that he was in, he was here. And this is where he, uh, he would hang his hat every day after painting. He did a painting every day for the last 37 days of his life. And that's it. So I brought some paintings along. I just wanted to talk about a little bit. Um, this was one of my first paintings coming back from uh, my first trip. Uh, I bought this gaudy frame at a secondhand store of whatever you call it. And um, I just love it. I, I think it works for the painting. If you feel this painting or you look at this painting and especially the one below, there's just, there's like hardly any texture on it. Um, when I first started painting, like I said, it was a wider brush and I really just wanted to go for a ragged, loose look. You know, I, I really, it, it suits me. Um, this was, based on Vincent's room at the asylum. A few years later, uh, I worked on this one after I got home. Um, I just really wanted to have some fun with 
an olive tree and how twisted the branches are and playing with color, my complementary colors of greens and reds, blues, some yellowy greens through here and down through the bottom. Um, I love motion. I love things to flow. I love things that hold my interest. You know, I, I teach painting and I tell people that um, I work with that, you know, please don't ever stop working on a painting until you absolutely love it. You've got to be able to stand back from it and say, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. And then you're done. But if you stop before that on every painting you do, you're never going to feel like you've completed anything or accomplished anything, or that you even like your work. Um, everything I've done, I, I've never stopped working on it until I absolutely love it. And uh, that's important to me. A um, few years later, this is probably about eight years ago. Um, this was uh, outside of a town, Il sur le Sorgue. And uh, I stopped, took the shot, and worked on it once I got home. I just loved sweeping the grasses around and putting in, there weren't this, there weren't this many flowers in the uh, meadow itself. And I don't think there were quite this many trees. And of course they probably weren't that color, but who cares? I like color, I like playing with it. But you know, there are pinks in here and greens and oranges. And you know, I, I love, all that color next to color, it really speaks to me and it keeps things vibrant and moving. This one I did last year maybe, I think, a um, year and a half ago. And this is in Lebeau. Uh, this is a very old um, olive grove. And uh, I, rem I, I can feel what it was like just looking at this. It was a very hot day. And um, the smell, you know, the, the smell in the air around the olives, the, the groves, and, you know, for, for the south of France itself, I mean, the, your, your senses, senses are so heightened there with sounds and smells, and, and the visual is just incredible. I, I think around every corner I went, I was saying, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, you know, it was just so much beauty down there. This, I don't know that I'm gonna sell. I mean, I, I've had it up a couple times for sa sale, but I've had this hanging in my house off and on for a while now, and it just takes me right back to Lebeau and um, my love for the old, old olive trees. It really uh, is one of my all-time favorites. But um, I, uh, oops. What did I do? Can we shut that off? <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back to uh, the south of France, hopefully, um, uh, if not this year, then next year. Uh, I've got a lot more work I wanna do and um, uh, canvas is the paint, you know, it's just like I'm, I'm always wanting to do a better job on the next one and the next one and the next one. It's, it's all about constant improvement. And uh, that's, that's uh, what it's about for me. I don't really have a whole lot else. Um, and I think that's it. We have some for you. Oh, okay. Do I have a favorite painting? It was probably that one that I showed you in the very beginning of the wall at that meadow. Um, it's, it still hangs in my house and uh, I can't part with it. You know, it's, it's this meadow in, in Egalier and uh, the one that I said the rock is jutting up out of it and the wall at that end of the, the lower end of the meadow, it just, it just speaks to me. So, along with this one. What is one of your favorite things about the process? What's my favorite thing about the process? I think my favorite 
thing about it is, let me, let me put it this way. My favorite thing about the process is totally letting go. Um, I remember back when I was young, I would get these images in my mind and I couldn't reproduce them. Um, so I thought I, was, I wasn't a very good artist. And today I know that whenever I start putting paint on a canvas and I'm, I've got to work through the ugly stage. I've got to work through um, all kinds of issues with getting this much paint on a canvas and have it turn into something beautiful for me. And uh, I don't know, you know, my favorite part of it is when, you know, I guess it's when it all really starts to come into focus. It's that last hour, you know, that's, that's the sweet part, you know, that's like, you know, taking all day to prepare a meal and then sitting down and tasting it and uh, really enjoying it. But um, yeah, I really, uh, I love all of it because it, it's just, it's such a, it's such an escape for me. I, I just love that. So I hope that answers it. Approximately how long does it take you to complete a piece of art? That's the number one question. How long does it take to complete a painting? Um, whew, it, it, taking into consideration how much time I spend looking at a painting versus painting it, um, I spend much more time looking at it than I do painting it, I think. I, you know, I really can't, I've never done a timesheet on it, but, you know, 10 hours, 8 hours, 20 hours. Um, uh, there's only one painting I've done that took a year to do, and I sold that a long time ago. It was a very stormy ocean and a boat, um, but I committed myself to a year of working on it, and... Uh, that was a that was a hell of an undertaking, and I won't do it again probably. But uh, yeah, it's six to twenty hours, depending on the piece. Sometimes the smaller ones take a lot longer than I would think. Is it hard to part with your paintings? Is it hard to part with my paintings? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I I've. Um, I've had pieces that I have sold and I wish I didn't. Um, there was one that I sold way back in the beginning. It was a huge four foot by five foot canvas of a uh, Shakespeare bookstore in Paris. And uh, I sold that at an art show uh, in Chagrin way back in 2003, I think, or four. It was a painting that I took six months to do. And I sold it to a very good friend of mine. and. Uh, Turns out about three or four years ago, he asked if I wanted to buy it back and I did. <laughs> and it's been in my living room ever since. But uh, yeah, there are times that it's, you know, I wave by you know, <laughs> and I ask for visitation rights, but um, yeah, it's, it's hard to let them go sometimes, yeah. Have I planned my next trip? No. Um, I'd, 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 I'd love to say that I can go this year, but with the current situation um, with COVID, of course, my biggest concern is getting over there and not being able to get back um, for a considerable amount of time. Um, I called, I've got friends over there and I didn't call, I emailed one of them over there and she told me that uh, the restaurants still weren't open down south. Um, and I don't, I don't know that that's true for all of them. I think, you know, a little village that's primarily store, restaurant, store, restaurant, store, restaurant, I, you know, that town wouldn't do very well without the restaurants being open and being available to customers. But, um, yeah, that's my concern is just going over there and not being, you know, for whatever reason, not being able to come back for weeks and weeks and weeks and burning through a lot of money to stay there. So, um, yeah, you know, really it, it, it took a lot of planning in the beginning to make these trips. And now I think I could just pack a bag and go and be fine. You know, it's, 
I know the I know the drill. I know exactly where to go, what to do, and how to get there. And uh, it's uh, it's something I could do in a heartbeat. I'd love to. <laughs> so, thank you very much. I really appreciate this. Thanks.